What's up, what's up, live? How's everybody doing? And of course, phones would ring immediately once we begin the live. Uh, all good though. Matter of fact, we put mine in airplane mode. What we're doing in today's live is something that's a little bit different. I actually have a special guest here, uh, but he's not new to the channel. He's my brother, Sawine, and he talks about real estate. Usually, we do a lot of pre recorded videos, we upload them. Then you guys uh, can go watch them after the fact and leave your comments down below. Um, that's a good thing. But the issue with that is that there's only over 1,400 videos here on this YouTube channel. Um, so what I want you to understand is that you can leave a comment. It's not that we're intentionally ignoring you. It's the fact that so 1,400 videos and thousands of people leave comments every single day. So what we're going to do in today's video is actually have Sawan talk to you all live answer your questions live. As I always tell you, participation matters. What he's going to teach you live today is how you can replace your nine to five income this year utilizing real estate, even if you have zero dollars. What I need you all to do in the chat is go ahead and put a one in the chat if you're ready to learn how to replace your nine to five income, right, with real estate. I'm not saying that you have to because it's all about happiness. All right. So if you love what you're doing, you're going to do it till you die anyway. That's cool. Why not have an additional income stream that if you ever wanted to do something else, you have the ability to do so. All right. So I see a lot of ones in the chat. What I want you all to do before I bring them on is, is listen and tentatively and do not let him get off of this live until your question is answered. If you're watching this video after the fact, be sure to subscribe if you're new or subscribe if you're live now. Share this video with anybody you think it can help. And again, the whole goal of this channel is to motivate, educate, and inspire you to do something entrepreneurial. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to him. Get your questions ready. Matter of fact, if you have questions before he even says anything, right, start putting it in the chat right now. All right, start typing your questions just to put it in the context. If you're somebody out there, that does not know how to make money with real estate and enough money to pay all of your recurring bills, right? Put a detailed question in the chat. Reason why I want you to put a detailed question in the chat is because if you put a broad question, you get a broad answer. And then you'll say, oh, JT, we can't do nothing with that, right? Well, he answered your question. All right. So put a detailed question in the chat if you want a detailed answer. All right. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. So, hey, without further ado, here's my brother, Swan. What's up, people? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, uh, this is nice. I'm actually gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to turn this light on. Uh, let's see. Here. I got you. Um, if everybody can hear me, if everybody can hear me, oh, they already put ones in the chat. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Well, that means that means we popping. Um. Oh, there we go. It's crispy. Okay. There we go. All right. So look, guys. I want to make sure that you guys got this thing down. Uh, when I actually came in town today, I said, yo, look, we need to go live. We need to help some people uh, answer their questions directly. Um, so if you all already know me or if you don't know me, let me tell you. OK, um, so Juan Belcher, this is me taking action anywhere on on social media. That's how you'll find me. OK, and what I do, OK, is I buy property OK, without any money. Without your personal credit. OK, and then also without a down payment. OK, one question that I frequently get asked is, um, hey, I have bad credit. How do I purchase a house? Hey, man, I get paid under the table, you know, um, but I make a lot of money. I, I have a down payment, but I can't prove my income because I, I don't file my taxes in that way. So I don't show any money on my taxes. So how do I get qualified for a loan so I can buy a house? You know? I also get, man, hey, man, I don't have a down payment. You know, I want a $200,000 house. The bank is telling me I need to bring 20 grand. I don't have that. How do I buy a house? And these three circumstances are not in my favor. Today, that's what we're going to go. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're going to go over in very much detail. So you can clearly understand. And so you can actually go out and implement. OK, so if you're interested, OK, just to, just to see, just to show that everybody's here. If you're interested in buying your next house, okay, your first or your next house in the next 90 days, okay, go ahead and drop a two in the chat real quick, just so I can see who I'm working with. 
Let's just see who's going to take action on this uh, on this information that we're going to go over today. All right. If you're ready to buy your first or your next house in the next 90 days, because that's how fast it can happen. I'm going to share one quick testimonial real quick. Yeah. Um, um, young man found me from JT's channel. His name is Nelson. Okay. You might see him in some of the comments as Sir Nelson. Okay. He picked up uh, the course bundle package. Okay. And four weeks later with the course bundle, you get three of our courses. And then you also get weekly coaching calls. Okay. After literally before the fifth call, you know, before the fifth call. So 30 days, he had a deal on the contract. Okay. And one thing that I do for all of my students that take action on the information that we teach here and they find a deal in my area using strategies that I talk about is I personally guarantee that they make their profit and I buy the house from them. Does that make sense? So I teach you how to do it, but then I also give you a guaranteed exit strategy. Okay. That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. First way, first thing that you guys think that you need is great credit to buy a house. Let's go ahead and debunk this. Okay. Typically, banks are looking at someone's personal credit history to determine if you're going to be a good payer or not, to find out if your bills are actually important to you. The money that you make, is it going to go to the bank to pay them back or not? Okay. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's why they want your credit. Okay. Now, if you have bad credit, how do we convince the bank that, uh, or someone else, the bank that we're going to like actually pay them back. Okay. Here's the, here's the first strategy to buy property without no credit. Okay. I want you to find a deal first, not, uh, not going on the MLS and just picking whatever property comes up. Okay. Um, not going to a, a realtor and, and asking them what they have available. Okay. You guys have to find a deal. Okay, and the reason why you're going to be able to buy a property with no credit and having a deal is because a deal is a deal, okay? Typically, people buy uh, houses at 100% or 110% of the value, okay? That's why the bank wants, uh, you know, credit. That's why they want down payment. That's why they want you to show income, okay? Because they're not in a good protected spot. If you, you know, if you default in the first year, the bank is losing. Right. So they're pulling your credit to try to hedge, you know, their protection. OK. But what if you bring a deal where, you know, you buy the house 50 percent, 40 percent of the value, meaning you find a three hundred thousand dollar house that you can pick up for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's 50 percent off. OK. Uh, or if you're in a, a smaller market, maybe you find a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house that you can buy for seventy five thousand and just to make it very clear because people always ask me well i'm in california i'm in new york can i do this let's just say you're in california and you found a million dollar house and you're able to buy it for half a million dollars okay when you're able to find deals and there's so much equity typically since there's so much equity it provides protection to the lender doing the deal with you, that it makes sense for them to give you the money, okay? If for whatever reason, you aren't able to get a loan to cover this property, there are people who need property to buy every single day, okay? Here are your, here are your steps, okay? Here are your, here are your steps. We need to find a good deal. I want you to do it off-market. Uh, okay. I want you to go to, I want you to go to, um, Zillow. Okay. I want you to go to Zillow. I want you to, um, go to the for sale tab and you're able to separate if it's listed by the owner or by the agent. You only want by the owner on Zillow. When you filter out the agents and only look at properties that are for sale by owner, it will list the owner's phone number on Zillow. You haven't paid any money at this point. Okay. Reach out to the owners and say, hey, great. Hey, Mr. John, sorry to call you out of the blue. How you doing? I'm doing good. Who's this? Hey, this is Sawan. I saw that your property on 123 Main Street, you know, it's for sale. You know, have you found anybody to buy yet? Okay. And when you start talking to this guy, 
the information that you need to collect is the condition of the property. Try to build some rapport in there, make them laugh a little bit, get them to know you. Why he wants to sell it. Most important part right there, this phone call. How soon he would sell it, okay? And then get a price commitment. Now, since it's already up on Zillow, he has a price on it. So don't think that your price commitment needs to be what he has it listed at, okay? Once again, we're trying to get a great deal, okay? After you go through the rigmarole of negotiating, finding out all of this information, right? Go back to Zillow and look through the sold comparables in that neighborhood. If the sold comparables say that that houses in this neighborhood are selling for two hundred thousand dollars, you know, there's a house sell for one hundred and eighty, one for one ninety, one for two hundred, another one for one eighty five, another one for one ninety five, another one for two hundred five, okay. But then you see some lower comps, ones that sold for ninety thousand, another that sold for a hundred thousand, and you start to see one for eighty thousand, another that sold for seventy thousand. You need to separate the two, okay? Because in this neighborhood, when you see high comps and low comps like this, this means that investors, like me and you, we're buying at seventy to a hundred thousand, and investors were selling. At 180 to 200,000. That's literally how the comps are going to look for you. There's going to be a set of high and there's going to be a set of low. When you make your offer, you need to be in that range of low. Make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. When you get the seller to agree to that amount, you do not need a realtor to write it up on a purchase agreement. You can go to my website and get the free purchase agreement and download it. This is me taking action.com. Wait on the page for a second. It'll prompt you to download the purchase agreement. Have them sign the purchase agreement. You signed it in your name. Okay. No deposit, no money needed so far. Okay. Then what you're going to do next, once you got the deal on the contract, is you're going to go to your local real estate um, attorney. Okay. You're going to go to your local title company, depending on which state you are. You'll go to a title company or a real estate attorney. Say, hey, I got a great deal on the contract. Do you know any investors I can sell this deal to? Okay. Real, real estate attorneys and title companies are responsible for closing out real estate transactions every single day. And because they do this every single day, that's probably going to be somebody there that's closing on a deal, right? That's, uh, that's lending money. The attorney probably does it himself. <laughs> that's going to be willing to buy the deal from you and you'll be able to sell that deal before you ever purchased it. Meaning since you got a million dollar house on the contract for half a million or you got a $200,000, you know, house under contract for a hundred thousand dollars because it's such a good deal. You can sell that house before you buy it. And essentially one will be a purchase agreement between you and the seller. You'll set up another purchase agreement between you and the buyer. And when you take it to your closing attorney, He's going to have the buyer for your deal bring their money before the seller comes in <laughs> and signs their paperwork. So the buyer for your attraction is going to give the money, sign his paperwork. You'll sign yours. The seller will come in later on that day, come in and sign their paperwork. You'll sign yours. And the difference between the two contracts is your money to take home. Right? First way. First way to make money in real estate investing with no credit. Okay. Now the second thing that you guys was complaining about and saying, Hey, I, how can I buy a house if I have to prove my income? I'm going to give you guys another strategy for everybody that's for whatever reason, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur. You just started your business. Um, you haven't even filed your LLC yet. Maybe, uh, maybe you're, um, you know, maybe you work at a job where they pay you cash every, you know, every week. Uh, maybe you're a barber and you accept uh, and you accept cash and you accept cash app for payment and the bank won't take your your statements uh, for financing. Um, you know, for whatever reason, you make the income to support the monthly payment. OK, but no one will give you a loan. OK. This is going to be one of the strategies that you can use. OK. So this one is seller financing, okay? This one is seller financing. Now, 
I don't want you to go mental haywire on me and start thinking, why would someone who already owns a property sell the property to me, you know, on payments? That has nothing to do with you. The only thing that you can do with you is control you. So don't think for the seller. <laughs> okay. Don't think for the seller. These are the people that are more likely to say yes to your creative seller financing offer. And these are the people that you need to reach out to. Okay. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to, um, um, which one should you guys go to? Um, I'll prefer you to go to list source. Okay. You're going to go to listsource.com. Okay. And you're going to generate a list. You're going to generate a list so we can market, market out to people in that list. It can be whatever city that you're going to target. Okay. But when you get to the filter that says equity, I want you to put a hundred percent equity in there. That's going to filter out. That's going to filter out everyone who has a property that is paid off in the city that you want to pull a list in. Okay. That's the key to seller finance, financing is the house has to be paid off. And believe it or not, paid off houses are very common in the United States. The house that we're in today is paid off. Okay. So create your list, listsource.com. Filter it down to the city you want. Equity, 100%. Now you're going to market to that list via cold calling, just on your normal cell phone. You're going to market to them via text message, just on your cell phone. Okay. And this is what I want you to say. If I were to pay the price you want <laughs> with a fair amount down, would you consider selling? That's what you're going to say to them. If I were to pay the amount you want with a fair amount down, would you consider selling? Okay. All right. So hold on. Let's stop. Let's stop real quick because it seems like somebody is confused. It says seller financing is where I get confused. Okay. Let me, let me help you with your mindset because for you to understand, you have to say that, you know, you understand. Okay. Stop saying seller financing is confusing to yourself. Okay. Don't say that no more. Ask your question that you're confused about, but don't make an affirmation that you are something that's negative because you don't want to do that. So that's like saying, you know, I am broke. You know, um, you, you don't want to make those kind of affirmations about yourself. So at this point, we want to clear up the confusion. So ask your, like, like JT said, ask your specific question. And we will make it pop for you. Okay. The reason why people. Okay, great. I like uh, Simone says seller financing is like asking someone to take payments as opposed to, um, uh, you know, being paid by the bank. Okay. Okay. So this is what seller financing is. Okay. When someone owns a property, they own it, not because they wrote their name on the side of it. They own it through a piece of paper. OK, on some articles, they might call it an instrument, you know, on uh, some attorneys uh, will call it a warranty deed. You know, um, uh, some other people might call it just a deed. OK, but essentially through that warranty deed or that deed, that's how the owner is determined. A piece of paper that's downtown at your local courthouse that says, hey, this person owns this address. Make sense so far? OK. Now, the way a mortgage protects itself is by um, leveraging collateral from the borrower. Collateral can be seen as cash. Collateral can be seen as uh, credit. Collateral can also be seen as real property, real estate. So the way the banks protect themselves through the collateral is a piece of paper called a deed of trust. Some people call it a mortgage. So these are two separate pieces of paper. A warranty deed, this is the owner. A deed of trust, this is the mortgage, okay? I'm gonna break it down even simpler, okay? I know everybody here has a credit card. When you take your credit card from Capital One and you go into the grocery store and you buy some green beans with your Capital One credit card, they just gave you money in order to buy those green beans. Who owns the green beans? You do, you just purchased the green beans, so those are yours. Okay. Who money did you use? Capital One. Okay. There are two different things. Okay. So that's the first one. 
for seller financing, in order for seller financing to work the the, the best, okay, is um, not that it can't work another way, but in order for it to work the best, they need to be paid off. Transactions are very simple if they're paid off. So that's why I asked you to go find a 100% paid off, okay? Now, for everybody who was listening, type in in the chat the text message I said you should send to the uh, to the seller um, that has a house paid off. Uh, will this be available on replay? Yes. Okay. For everybody that was paying attention, that actually wrote down the text message that you're supposed to send out to the free and clear list, please type it in the chat. Okay. We got 115 people here. Okay. I want to make sure you guys understand it. Okay. Here's what the text is that you're going to send out to your free and clear list. Please write it down. I promise this works. Okay. I literally just made a $15,000 check two weeks ago doing the same strategy on a five unit. Okay. I think it was 1020 Klondike Road in, uh, in uh, State Road, North Carolina. Okay. Once again, if I were to pay the price you want. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Miss CEO Boss Lady. If I were to pay the amount you want. With a fair amount down, would you consider selling? I love it. Shout out, shout out to you, Miss CEO. Um, all right, cool. When you reach out to those people via that text message and they respond back, is now your time to get your, you, you got to get your talk game on. Okay, you got to get your talk game on. If they responded with a with a uh, with a with a curse word, your job is to respond back to them. Okay. If they respond with you to say, hey, what do you mean? Your job is to respond back. We need to get the same exact information we just got on our previous call. We need to get the condition of the property, why they would consider selling, okay? how soon they would consider selling. And if they were to sell to you, what price would they commit to selling at if I were to buy it today? Okay. Now, the way they're going to get paid, okay, let's say that they agree at 200 grand. OK, um, the way they're going to get paid is through that fair amount down. So whatever is agreeable, let's call it three thousand dollars. OK. Well, so Juan, you said I wasn't going to need no payment. Well, no down payment. We're going to get to that on the next on the on the next uh, explanation to show you how you can get rid of the down payment. But on this particular one, let's just say that they agree to three thousand dollars down. OK. The benefit to the seller of not getting their whole 200 and just taking $3,000, the benefits to the seller is that number one, they're only getting taxed on the $3,000 now. If somebody sells a house for 200,000, that's $200,000 of income that the IRS knows about because all real estate transactions have to go through a real estate attorney or title company that reports to the IRS. So that's one benefit is they save on their taxes. Second benefit, is that they get the benefit of consistent cash flow, okay? They get the benefit of consistent cash flow. Landlords and homeowners have responsibility of maintenance, insurance on the property, property taxes, um, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, just all kinds of expenses. So when you're talking to these investors and they say, well, I got the property rented out, you know, you might want to leverage your negotiation in knowing that he has expenses to keep that tenant there, property taxes, maintenance, insurance. Because a lot of times if they're getting $1,000 in rent and their mortgage is $600, you know, um, there's expenses that have to come out. And HVAC breaks, that's $6,500. That could, ruin a, that could ruin, ruin a whole year for a landlord, right? Why else would a seller agree to taking payments over time, okay? Well, a lot of people don't actually have to have the money today, okay? Uh, just, just to be honest. You know, I had this seller that he agreed to sell this five unit to me that I was just telling you about, okay? He totally forgot that he owed a hundred grand on the property. So when we did the title search, the hundred thousand dollars came up. The down payment that we agreed to was zero, okay? We agreed to a zero dollar down payment, <laughs> you know? He wired the hundred thousand to the attorney so he could do a seller financing deal with me with zero dollars down. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? But it was valuable to it was valuable to him. He agreed to zero dollars down, one seventy five 
over a 30 year term at 6% interest. Right. And the reason why he sell was be he sold, be it was rented out three tenants rented it out $1,800 currently, you know, have potential to be rented for more because there was two vacant units, you know, and those tenants was lower and those, uh, those rent payments was low. But the reason why he sold it was because the septic tank was too small for all the new dishwashers and for all the new people that he had moved in, right? So he didn't. He lived in DFW, lived in Dallas. He didn't want to deal with uh, having to go through the permit process and all that good stuff. Um, you know, it was easier for him to just send a check for hundred thousand dollars to pay it off and then sell it to me on terms. Nonetheless. I sold, I sold it to someone else and made a $15,000 check, okay? Once again, once those people agree to their down payment, they agree to their part, their price, you can throw in some extra uh, interest if you like, but I definitely like 0%, um, you know, seller financing notes. Once they agree, use the free purchase agreement at This Is Me Taking Action. You can use the exact same purchase agreement. Wait on the screen there, download the purchase agreement, send it to the seller, and once you have it under contract, just like I did in that last transaction, if you don't have the down payment, you can definitely find another buyer who will be more than willing to take your place in that deal and you get paid a, you know, a spread. Now, this third way, this third way that I like to buy houses, okay, is amazing. I, I, it's personally my favorite, personally my favorite, okay? And this is going to solve your problem with the down payment, you know? First problem is you say you don't, you know, you don't have no credit or you have bad credit. Second problem is, hey, I can't prove my income. We don't solve both of those. So now we're down to the last problem. Last problem is I don't have no down payment. Okay. <laughs> the, the last problem is I don't have no down payment. Okay. Hold on. Let's stop here and answer some of these questions here. Um, what if I could pay you what you want for your house plus the, okay, great. Yep. That's good. Um, if I was able to pay the amount you want, oh, nice. I like it. I like it. You guys are actually paying attention. I love it. Uh, if you have any questions about what we went over so far, uh, drop it in the chat below. Okay. MIT 2008. MIT 2008. MIT 2008. I don't see that. You see what the question is? Um. Oh, there it is. Okay. In the state of Florida. Uh, if you have a property under contract, they require you to do a double closing and you cannot do um, and you cannot do a simultaneous close. You must do a double close utilizing your funds to close. See, um, MIT 2008. OK. I need you to have an abundance mindset. OK, I need you to have an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset means that you have so much that it flows out of you, okay? And you have to give it away. That means that everything goes your way. Everything bad is working for your good. All things evil eventually turn to good for me, okay? So let's let's break this down, brother. You said in the state of Florida, if you have a property under contract, they require don't let let's don't 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 be so limited there. They require you to do a double closing. Okay, so that right there tells you that this is possible, okay? He's talking about our example, the first example where we purchased a property under, put a property under contract and we sold the property to someone else with a purchase agreement um, in the exact same day. So we got the property on the contract for, let's call it half a million dollars. We got a buyer that's gonna come in and pay us $550,000 on the exact same day. That's what he means by simultaneous uh, closing, you, that you have to do a double closing. And he's saying you cannot do the simultaneous close. You must do a double closing using your funds to close. Let's think about this. Let's think about this particular deal here. We got a half a million dollar house. It's worth a million dollars. We got a buyer that is willing to pay $550,000. And you saying you think you cannot come up with the funds to do this transaction that it's going to take less than 24 hours to close. OK, let's think about this. Instead of saying I can't, let's think, how can I? Since I'm going to make fifty thousand dollars on this deal, who can I do this deal with who will be willing <laughs> to participate in the profits with me? Maybe the attorney that's doing the paperwork will see the benefit in bringing some money to the deal because he's handling the whole paperwork. Right. 
maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't mind, right? Who has money in a 401k. Maybe there's a fidelity, a Vanguard in your neighborhood, an investment banker where you can present an opportunity where he can lend to you for less than 24 hours and make $10,000. The money doesn't go to you. It goes to the attorney. It comes back. It comes back to him. It never touches your, it's never touches your wallet, but he's able to make $10,000 in less than a few hours. You don't think that you could find somebody that, to do that? You don't think you can go to Fidelity? You don't think you can go into your bank and say, hey, I got these two purchase agreements? You know, come on now. You don't think you can go to uh, uh, Amex, Chase, uh, local banks. I, I typically use uh, Oak Ridge. You don't think you can go to, uh, you know, you don't think you can go to the local real, real estate investors association? Come on now. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it like this. Um, because in business, we cannot think I can't. We have to think, how can I? That's the difference between you and me, right? I'm telling you. Anytime a problem comes my way, this is what I say to myself. Anything that comes my way, I can handle it. I don't say, oh, no, forget it. I'm not going to make my $50,000 now. Let me just Let me just keep moving on. Like this isn't amazing. Come on, man. Come on. We got you, bro. We got you. So you can you can go on Google and do uh, you can do a search for transactional funding. Matter of fact, if you got a deal where you need, you know, where you need a simultaneous close and you need a transaction funder, email me S Belcher, S B E L C H E R at buytriadhomes.com. Send it there. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do a deal together for sure. All right, let's get let's get to this third one, okay? Let's get to this third one, okay? So if you don't have no credit, we solved that. We can always buy. We can always get a deal on the contract and sell it to someone else before we close and make the spread. And we don't have proof of income. We can always hunt for people who have uh, properties that are paid for and offer them their profits on time. And we talked about their benefits of doing that. Is they're they're taxed less, right? They're able to actually cash flow from that you know process. Uh, and then also they get like a consistent check every single month, no matter what. Okay. And then of course uh, the last one that we didn't talk about is they get the benefit of possibly getting the property back in the future, right? That's what lenders like. Okay. Third one. Third one. Okay. Third one. I don't have a down payment coach. <laughs> um, I'm sorry that you came late. It's going to be a replay. Uh, you don't have a down payment. Here's how we're going to cover the down payment. And this strategy, and this strategy is we're going to reach out to people who are in NOD. Okay. Notice of default. They have a property that they've purchased in the last five years. Some of them longer. You know, but I'm I'm help I'm helping you target down your you know the person that you're looking for. You're you're gonna reach out to people that's purchased in the last five years. They have a mortgage on their property, and for whatever reason, they're 90 days late, so they go into a status called NOD, notice of default. That's when the banks have to reach out to the local courthouse to let <laughs> to let the uh, courthouse know that there's somebody in your city messing up the game. They haven't paid their mortgage in 90 days. I'm about to start the pre foreclosure process. When you get that list of those people from your courthouse for free, what you're going to reach, what you're going to say to them, okay? What you're going to say to them and say, hey, how you doing? Have a normal conversation. I help people stop foreclosure on their homes. Okay. I help people stop foreclosure on their homes. That's it. That's what you're going to do. Essentially, the way we're going to help them is we're going to get them to agree to a cash amount outside of their loan. We just had a young lady, um, uh, 123 West Old Glencoe Road. Okay. We had a young lady agree to, um, $3,000 outside of her loan. So that means we would give her $3,000. She would leave the mortgage in place for us. Okay. The amount that's due that she's behind, we would be responsible for catching that up. And now we would be responsible for making those payments on her behalf. Okay. So we'll give her $3,000. The mortgage that she left behind was $80,000. The monthly payments are $450. 
Okay. And um, I think this lady was behind $1,500. That's 90 days. Okay. So she needed $3,000, $1,500. And we need another $1,500 for the closing, for the attorney. How do we come up with this if this is going to be solve my solution with, with no down payment, so on? Great. I get it. She's going to be willing to give us her mortgage payment. I get it. You talked about the owner and the mortgage being two separate pieces of paper. So essentially, I can be the owner and the mortgage can stay the same. I get it. But how am I going to come up with the with the down payment, so on? And this is how we're going to do it. So in this particular situation, $3,000 to the seller, $1,500 behind. Okay, $1,500 for the closing attorney to make it all work. So essentially, we need $6,000. Now, this house is a three bedroom, two bath house that sits on two acres with a detached garage that has an apartment above it with the bathroom. So essentially, this is a four bedroom house with three and a half baths. We just took over an $80,000 note on. We looked up the comps in the area and I'll say it again. Uh, I'll say how we can look up the comps, but we looked up the comps in, on this particular house and we found out, you know, that it could sell for about $220,000. Interesting. We now owe 80. It could sell for 220. We need to find a down payment. So we're going to market this property on sites like Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist, on Zillow. We're going to uh, reach out to some realtors. We're going to go to our, you know, our title companies and our closing attorneys and ask them if they have investors. And we're going to rent this property. Excuse me. We're going to market this property as rent to own. Okay. Rent to own is the marketing term. The legal term is called a lease option. Okay. You're going to find someone who has the down payment money themselves, but for whatever reason, they can't qualify for a loan. All right. So they need you. And there's a lot of people that make a lot of money who can't qualify for loans. All right. So you need to make sure their option deposit that they're going to pay you is more than what you need to bring to the table. Okay. Now this is, like I said, is a $220,000 house. OK, people are OK with typically putting, you know, 10 percent down. So what's 10 percent of two hundred and twenty? That's twenty two thousand dollars. So we're going to market the property rent to own with a future promise to sell price of two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. OK, I will enter in that agreement to sell you the property for two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. OK. You don't have to bring me all of the money right now, but you do have to bring me an option deposit of $22,000, okay? And we're going to go to rentometer.com to verify how much the current rents are because a lease option is, hey, I'm giving you this option deposit so I can lock in that I'm buying it. You're going to give me three years, 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. That's the longest that I typically agree to, okay, to come up with the rest of the money via a loan or sell the property, da, 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 da. OK, so let's say rents are uh, $1,600 in this area. My mortgage payment on this house is four fifty. OK, so whatever is left is going to go to me. So this person gives me twenty two thousand dollars. I use six of it to take care of the seller and the closing cost and to catch up the mortgage payments. They move into the property. And since they're promising me that they're going to buy it, they're responsible for the maintenance and then they also pay me monthly so now i'm getting a monthly spread from that property every single month so i get paid at the front no down payment needed i get paid in the middle of the deal every single month and then of course when they go to get their loan at the end of the term i get paid again because like i said we promised to sell it to them for 220 all we owe is 80 we just purchased a property by taking over someone's mortgage okay and then we exit it with no down payment by selling it on a lease option. All right, there we go. No credit, <laughs> no income proof, no proof of income, no down payment. Ask your questions. We're at minute marker 39, okay? Uh, ask your questions. If you have any questions about the three strategies where we just explained how you will buy a property with no credit, no proof of income, or no down payment, Please ask your question. We want to make sure that you have everything that you need on this 45 minute presentation of how you can buy your next property in 90 days. OK. Come on. There we go. I love it. If you guys didn't if you guys didn't realize, OK, all of these strategies 
if you didn't want to use as a rental property, all of these strategies, we could also use to buy our own personal house. Okay. If for whatever reason, you know, you wanted to use that list of free and clear owners to uh, come up with uh, terms where you can move into that house yourself and you have your own personal house, then, hey, amen. It is what it is. That like, The third scenario where we are reaching out to people who are in notice of default, they're 90 days behind. If we wanted to, you know, uh, reach out to those people and, and have a personal house where we're taking over somebody else's mortgage and it's our personal house that we live in, then, hey, that works. That's just fine. There is no limitation. There is no limitation to this. OK, for clarification, the house is still um, the house. The house is still 80,000. So to clear that up, what is owed on the house is still 80,000. Yes, you're charging the buyer 220,000 and the difference is yours to keep. Yes, ma'am. That's how that's how buying and selling works. Yes, ma'am. Yep. So you're buying the property. From the seller, in this case, it was subject to. So they're leaving the $80,000 mortgage in place. The mortgage payments are $450. Your The money that you need is $6,000. So you, you market the property as rent to own. Somebody brings your option deposit. They pay you monthly until they get their loan. When they get their loan, boom, your $80,000 is paid. The remainder of the two twenty dollars is, is take home for you. Okay. Um, and that's just what it is, boss. Hey, I appreciate that question. That's a good one. Uh, so is this considered a subject to the last scenario? Yes, it's considered subject to. Um, that's what attorneys and title companies are going to recognize it as. Do not say the word subject to to sellers because they don't know what you're talking about. OK. The second scenario was called seller financing or owner financing. Once again, don't say those terms to the seller. You know, I like to tell the seller, take your profits over time. When you talk to an attorney, then they'll know what seller financing and owner financing is. The first scenario was either called double closings or assignments. Once again, we're not going to say that to the seller because they don't know what we're talking about, but we can say that to an attorney and they'll know exactly what's up. Okay. Will the house be in your name or remain in the, in the customer's name? Come on. Let's. I want Mr. Mr. Rod. Oh, we're gonna shake this off of you, boss. We're gonna shake this off of you. When you're buying a property, when you're buying buying once again, let's. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the um, of the training here today, and we first started off. The owner of a property is not your property because you tattooed your name on the side of it. It's not your property because you wrote your name in spray paint uh, in the driveway. Ownership is declared by a piece of paper held at your county courthouse that is called a warranty deed. So when we're so when we're referencing buying in this presentation, that means that the home is going to be in your name, your LLC name or in your trust name. So yes sir. Yes sir, of course. Of course, of course, of course. I am not trying to promote people to go out and become renters. I'm trying to I'm trying to share strategies of how instead of renting, I'm trying to give a better financial way to uh to escape you know, non-ownership. Matter of fact, I thought it was so interesting because this week on the news in Greensboro on, on uh, Fox 13, they were talking about the city making these new plans over on Lawndale and Battleground. And they're talking about the new plans on the news. And they say, hey, we want the city's input because the city is not going to do this for another three or four years. And for all business owners and homeowners to come to the city council meeting to uh to put in their fair share vote but if you were a tenant and you didn't own you could not come to this city council meeting and you could not share what you wanted done to this public street so that's why i promote ownership so you know, so to answer your question mr rod yes sir the property would go into your name your llc name or your entity with any of these three strategies um i'm taking a real estate class uh, okay all right all right i'm, I'm gonna break this down real quick I'm taking real estate classes right now. None of these strategies require you to be a licensed real estate agent. None of these strategies that I talked about today require you to be a licensed real estate agent. If you can understand that, put a three in the chat. Okay. So we don't need you to take classes. If you want to take a, your real estate class, then take your class. Real estate agents represent people, other people who own property. Real estate agents represent them and help them sell on their behalf. Real estate investors own property. 
we can sell our own property. We can buy our own property. We don't need a real estate license to do that. Real estate agents need to have their license because they're selling houses on behalf of other people. Okay. So uh, let's, let's continue with this. Is this worth my time to answer your question? It's not worth my time to get a real estate license because they don't teach you real estate. Um, and honestly, they don't teach you. They don't teach you a lot of real estate law. They teach you more of, you know, how to show people houses. And, but that's not what I want to do. I want to buy property, control an asset, be able to rent it out for a period of time to make some cash flow and then be able to sell it. Enjoy the pre uh, appreciation when I sell it. So that means make a fat bag. And I want to be able to uh, use the uh, the property for tax benefits while I hold it. That's my reason for buying property. So, yep, yep, yep. Real estate agent versus real, real uh, investor. I just explained that. So I hope you got that there. Um, your three examples were great. The lease option was a little confusing. Um, ask your question because I don't, uh, I don't want you to be confused. Ask your question about the lease option. Now, what happens if the renter misses a payment? Then you evict them. <laughs> if the renter misses a payment then you evict them. Okay. That's what happens. Okay. Now I know a lot of people get nervous here. They say, okay, great. The renter misses a payment. You're responsible for the mortgage. What do I do? You get them out of there. You do an eviction. Okay. The good news is an eviction just doesn't change the owner of your, uh, the status of your ownership. You still own the property. So it's like, well, I'm not receiving rent now. What do I do? You put it back up for rent. Okay. You tired of dealing with tenants now? Hey, you sell it. Okay. It's very easy. Okay. It's a, this is not like buying gold chains. Okay. We are not buying jewelry. We're not buying sneakers. Okay. People always will need housing. I promise where you're standing right now in your seat, all 133 of you all, if you look up, there's a roof. Everyone needs housing. So it's okay. If you got to do an eviction, that's just a part of the game. Okay. The good news is when you do an eviction and you're a real estate investor, you can get rent loss on your insurance. Okay. I just had a rental property get shot up. Okay. Uh, old lady, 71 years old, uh, you know, selling stuff out of my house. Okay. <laughs> it's literally selling stuff out of my house. She made somebody upset. They came through, put 35 holes in the, uh, in the side of my house for this old lady that's 71 years old. Okay. She's, uh, she was section eight at the time she moved out. Section eight is still paying the rent. I didn't realize it wasn't there until my property manager called me. And so some people like, Oh, what are you going to do about your house? They got shot up. I'm going to file an insurance claim. Let me tell you how much the insurance is paying me. Okay. Number one, they're paying me for the damages to the siding, to the metal, for the windows. Okay. Um, for the sheetrock inside the house. Um, uh, they pay me for so much stuff. Okay. They, uh, one of the bullets went through the porch rail. So they pay me to put a new porch on. <laughs> okay. But they're also paying me for rent loss. Okay. Rent loss is in a landlord's policy for the month that she moved out for the month, that, for the months with an S that we have to rent out the property. And for the month that we have to promote the property to get rented out, insurance is coming to check on it. Okay. You evicting a tenant is the least of your worries. Okay. Own the asset, control the asset. That's what we need to do. Okay. That's what we need to do. Let's get some more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, are you saying section eight and your insurance is paying you or just one of the others paying you for the rental loan? Um, so section eight paid me for three of the months. Um, and then when I realized that she wasn't there, then they, uh, section eight stopped paying. Uh, and then that's when we found out then, uh, when section eight stopped paying, that's when we found out that, um, uh, that the house had been shot up because right. the property manager went out there that time. And at that point, that's when we filed the insurance claim. And then boom, they, uh, they sent us like a scope of work for us to do and a check. All right. And for the yeah. people watching, how long will your insurance pay for that rental loss? Like Six months. Okay. Yep. Yep. So they pay. Yeah. Yeah. They pay for six months, six months rent loss on that plus the damages. Okay. See, look, see, look, 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 look. We can, I don't want to do this. Okay. Um, well, apply street knowledge says eviction process takes long. Okay. 
what that what that says to me is you're not willing to do the work. If it's hard, you're not going to do it. And so that's fine because we need people like you. We need people that's not willing to do it because I am, you know, sell me some property. Still do everything we talked about in this presentation. Find the motivated seller, negotiate with them, get it under contract using a free purchase agreement on the website. And instead of you taking down the property, you sell it to me. Find the seller who's willing to take their profits over time. Get it on the purchase agreement that we provide. You contact us and we'll buy from you. You get your fee. OK, find the seller who's behind on their mortgage payments. Right. Get them to sign a purchase agreement. Sell it to us. You make your fee. We'll deal with those problems. So I don't want you to I don't want you to continue to say negative things to yourself that causes you not to take action. OK, of course, millionaires have million dollar problems. Of course, people who are not millionaires have not millionaire people problems. Which problems do you want to deal with? OK, until they move out and you get new tenants, you're responsible for the mortgage. Of course, it's your property. Of course. Once again, when you own the property, here's how you can get money. You can get the money by way of sale. When you own the property, ownership is declared through warranty deed, as we talked about. So great. They stop paying. You can sell the property while they're still in it. You haven't even done the eviction process yet. You can sell it. First way, you can get your money. Second way is you can get a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Once again, we're buying properties at a discount. We can get a line of credit to take care of us while we're doing this. Okay? Third way we can get our, um, third way we can get some money is we can bring on a partner to buy interest inside of the property and still hold, uh, um, and still hold equity. So meaning I own 100% of the property right now. OK, if I don't have the money, I can say, yo, look, bro, I got this. I got this property. It got some equity on. it. I can't rent it out for this. You know, I'm looking to uh, sell a portion of my ownership. OK, the house is worth 200. I owe 100. OK, so uh, equity right now is uh, is one hundred thousand dollars of equity. If you give me twenty thousand dollars, I'll I'll sell you 50 percent of the equity on the property. We can go down to an attorney and make this happen right now. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want any. I don't want you to say nothing to yourself that stops you from taking action. I had a young lady that set up a coaching call with me and said that she got approved for a loan. The three uh, exit strategies that we talked, the three acquisition strategies that we talked about today don't require you to get a loan, but she had got a loan and she said, well, I don't have the down payment. I said, honey, don't just stop right there. She hadn't, she hadn't start looking for a house, even though they gave her a prequal letter because she didn't have the down payment. I said, honey, when you find the house that you want, okay, if you need $20,000, the seller agrees to $130,000, okay, the bank told you that you're approved for $150,000, have the seller sign a purchase agreement for $150,000, okay, let him know that he's going to get $130,000 at closing. That $20,000, that, excuse me, that extra $20,000 on paper is for the bank. All right, we're going to continue on to this. Uh, somebody asked, uh, hold on, is North Carolina, is, is North Carolina in talks about banning wholesaling? All right, guys, come on now. I don't want you guys to continue to say negative stuff to yourself that holds you back. Okay. Um, I'm gonna answer the question and I don't know, honey, cause I don't be paying attention to any of that. I'm so concerned about me making money today. I don't have no time for the what, what ifs, maybe, you know, I don't know. Uh, I got on the way up here to Fayetteville. I got paid three uh, three checks from Airbnb and one from VRBO. And um, um, and I also got a HUD to verify the closing for uh, for tomorrow. So I don't I don't I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know about that. Um, but also, I want you to know that if they do decide to ban wholesaling, we're not wholesalers. We are real estate investors. That means we buy properties for ourselves and we sell them, okay? Wholesaling is an assignment. We don't have to do an assignment. We can do a double close, okay? If they want us to take title to the property for uh, for 24 hours, then take ownership for 24 hours. Get your game up. Go, uh, go get a line of credit from your local bank that know what investors do. Get your game up. Go uh, build a list of proper money guys. Come on now. Get your game up. Make seller finance and subject to offers. Come on now. Come on now. I, I hope I'm helping you. I'm hope I'm I hope I'm helping you. Um by the way, if you guys are ever 
um, on the weekly coaching calls. Matter of fact, if you guys like this, we've been talking for about 54 minutes. If you guys like this right here, okay, um, the weekly coaching calls are like are, are, are like 100 times better um, because of you, you know, you just being in the chat. I mean, this is good, but every Sunday at 9 p.m., okay, there's 20 to 30 people actually doing the business, okay? Um, in in different parts of the United States. There's 20 to 30 people every Sunday at 9 p.m. on our weekly coaching calls. And we're talking about this kind of stuff right here. More than just deep diving, we're actually going over their deals. So let's just say you talk to a seller. They ask you a question you don't know how to respond to. You bring that question to the weekly coaching call and we help answer it for you. You got a deal. You got a commitment from the seller. You need help analyzing the deal. On the weekly coaching call, we help you analyze your deals, okay? Uh, my boy Nelson, who got a deal in uh, in just 30 days, okay, in just 30 days, like I said, it, on the fifth coaching call he was on, he had a deal making five grand. On Through that whole process, through that whole process, he had a question every Sunday in order to help him get a deal, okay? I'm powerful, 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 okay? The first thing that we look at on these weekly coaching calls is what kind of action did you take? In these three steps that we gave you today, I had action steps because I want you to take action. I don't want you to consume a bunch of information. I want you to take action. Okay. The first thing that we ask on these weekly, weekly coaching calls is how many leads did you generate? That was the first step in all three of these. How many people raised their hand, said, hey, I might consider selling. How many offers did you make? How many people did you actually say, hey, I'll pay this amount cash for. I'll do this seller financing. I'll do this subject too. And then the last one is how many deals did you get under contract and how much EMD did you collect from other people? Okay. Buyers, tenant buyers, bringing you money to buy these deals from you. Okay. Well, look, guys, look, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and rock here. So if you got any last questions, last minute questions, we got three minutes. We got three minutes. Ask your questions right now. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, thanks. Thanks, JT, for popping that, uh, popping the links in the chat. Um, how much is the coaching call? Coaching calls are $50 a month. And once again, we're meeting three to four times a week. So $50 a month. Stop playing. The, the goal of the coaching call is not to make a lot of money. The goal of the coaching call is for me to get people in one room so that I can have more resources, okay? Think about it. My selfishness of me wanting the best for myself is gonna help you. I need to get private money guys in a room. I need to get um, boots on the ground in different neighborhoods in the room. I need to educate you to find deals so that way you can sell them to me so I can pay you a profit or so we can own them together, okay? That is not expensive on purpose because I want everyone to be able to get the information that you need weekly so we can do deals together. Okay, it's fifty dollars a month. Um uh Simone said talk is talk. I talk is talk and action is action. Amen to that. <laughs> I love I love it. I love it. Just so you know, little but as I was pulling up here, I'm on the phone, you know. Cause I, I had uh, I had a, a VRBO guest that's been in one of my um, short term rentals for three months. He paid me fifteen thousand dollars. We taking action, okay? We taking action. My girl said, "Talk is talk, action is action." I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, okay, if if one area bans wholesaling, you could easily wholesale virtually online. Yes, you yes you could. I just want you to change your mindset that you're not a wholesaler, you're a real estate investor. That changes everything. Even when some people say, oh, well, pe they don't allow us to do short-term rentals in our neighborhood. Well, what is your neighborhood classifying as short-term? Okay. You know, you see what I'm saying? So I don't want you to think that I can't. I want you to think, how can I? Okay. Uh, and I like the way, and I like the way you said it. We can definitely uh, wholesale virtually for sure. Sundays at 9 p.m. What time zone? We're in Eastern Standard, uh, Eastern Standard Time, North Carolina. Come on and raise up. Take your shirt off. Twist it around your head. Spin it like a helicopter. <laughs> uh, um, what's the coaching call link? Um, JT, 
Oh, it's actually pinned. The coaching call link is pinned. If you'll check it out, it's pinned there. If you do not know, you do not know. There's no shame in that. I totally agree. Uh, and honestly, if I don't know everything, so I ask questions too. And so forgive me if I seem like I'm, I'm, I'm strong-willed or if I feel like I'm too confident, forgive me. That's just the way that I am. So, you know, but where the way I am is what got us here. So I'm grateful for it. Um, just know that there is always an alternative solution to any issue. Amen. There's more than one route to, to a destination. Amen to that. Today on the way here to Fayetteville, I debated if I was going to ride my motorcycle, whether I was going to drive the MDX or whether I was going to take the Escalade. Okay. Either way, it was going to get me here. So I like, I like, I like that. Thank you. A thank you. A W the beat. I appreciate you. A D W the beat. Um, Thank you. Uh, Ms. Brandy said, thanks, Sawan. Thanks, JT. Everybody shout out to JT. Y'all should be sharing his stuff because honestly, you know, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. So um, how do we sign up for the weekly coaching call? JT actually pinned the, um, the link above. OK, so here we go, guys. All in all, if you did it, if you if you just got here, the first thing we have to do is market directly to seller. Whenever we go to get those deals on the contract, you can get the free purchase agreement at thisismetakingaction.com. Download it. Once you have the seller sign the purchase agreement, your exit strategies are either to sell it before you even buy it to make a spread with no money. Secondly, to get the seller to agree to take their profits over time. Uh, so that way you don't have to use any credit or your income or proof of income in order to get the, the deal. Okay. Or you can find people who are in notice of default status, who are 30 days, 60 days, 90 days behind on their payments and offer them to take over their monthly payments. And so you don't have to bring any money to the, to the, to the table so you can walk away with a check is you're either going to sell it to someone else before you buy it or um, market it to rent, market it for rent to own. So you can get paid an upfront check, a monthly check and then a check at the end. So, hey. Come on now. <laughs> and if you once again, if you want weekly accountability, jump on Sundays at 9 p.m. Um, how do we sign up? Good energy. Yo, I'm all about the good energy. I'm always about the good energy. Um, but look, y'all, we about to be out of here. So, uh, JT, you want any last words? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Peace, y'all. I'll see you on the next one. All right, all right. So, uh, Hope you guys got value out of uh, this live stream. Let me come a little bit closer so the camera will focus on me. So I hope you guys got value out of today's live stream. If you guys enjoy this and want me uh, to bring on other friends of mine uh, to talk to you about the expert, the, the areas of expertise that they have, 100% put it in the comment section, put it in the chat. Um, I told you guys I'm a practitioner that partners with practitioner, uh, practitioners. All right. That's my South Carolina education. So um, Sawan has made over thirty thousand dollars in thirty days, over a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred consecutive days or less. Uh, so he has both of those awards, um, and, and many more as well. So this is not just somebody that, um, can talk really nice about real estate. How many doors you currently own, Sawan? I currently, I'm down to fifty nine. I sold three. All right. So he currently has fifty nine. Fifty nine doors. Can I tell him your age? Yeah. Yeah. Sawan is like thirty two years old. Yep. All right, so at 30, I got six kids. You guys, yeah, <laughs> got six kids and a dog. That's and not dog. that's not his dog. If you hear that dog barking, though, right? So uh, we all got dogs. Amen. All right, so um, what I want you all to do though is follow him on his social media. His social media handle is uh, at This Is Me Taking Action. I'm gonna put it in the chat really quickly here, just so you guys can uh can connect with him. And if you're watching this after the fact, it'll also be uh, the top link down in the description below. But this is, I can't even spell. This is me taking action, right? So go subscribe to his YouTube channel, his Instagram page. Check out all of his stuff. Tell you guys all the time, do your due diligence on me. Do your due diligence on him if you're new to the channel or if you're new to him, I'll make that the pin message. So his handle is at this is me taking action. Real estate has created the most millionaires. Most people think that you got to have a ton of money to do it. But Sawan is living proof that if you want to spend your money, you can. But that is not a necessity for you to make 
large sums of money in real estate, right? And uh, that's all I have to say about that. So until next time, don't muscle stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.